meeting to order. Planning and Zoning Board. <coughs> First order of business abbreviated be approval or the agenda that we have pursued. Second. Move to second it. Approval of the January 13 meeting notes. Any questions? Additions or subtractions? Call for a motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. So carried. We get to the discussion. Discussion on the assigned city code sections. Uh, before we get started going around the room, I know that I spent quite a bit of time this past few days reading this code. And of course, I don't think any of us are attorneys. Although I taught business law at one time, I am not used to a lot of these legalese, and I know they pre were prepared by attorneys, uh, reviewed by city council, and then laid upon this group here to look at, approve, or disapprove, or make questions about the same. I don't know if this is going to take a long time or a short time, but it seems like one heck of a lot of work. And I know that uh, we, there should be some specific questions asked by council, I believe, as to what section or we'd like some input from them uh, as to where, what they're questioning. Now, is this just a matter of procedure, as indicated? It's a matter of law. Well, I, and I would I would ask anybody that speaks to just take their mask down because we're not going to infect anybody at this distance, and you can't understand half the stuff you babble through a cloth. Well, just just to kind of clarify, we did this two years ago. We went through the code, and the committee went through and picked out things that looked at and not a little bit further we made made comments okay? okay and then we gave them to the city attorney and he adjusted those recommendations after the, the report was given to the city council if they wanted to adopt them and and this is kind of the same process and I got to give Wanda credit because she did this uh, and that's what they did Two years ago, they went through, made a little spreadsheet, kind of went through the sections, and just asked everybody if, okay, do, do we need to, you know, like, I'll just use the first couple things. Uh, proof of enforcement, proof of delivery, adding a photo, that's probably a good idea, because sometimes those enforcement things come back to us. They're certified letters. And, get them back uh, so what we do we post it so and we do take a picture but it doesn't say that here so maybe we need to add that word Lynn what what we'll do is go through this later on but I was just making yeah. a comment as chairman yeah. we're in a situation to pursue this and I think we're putting in a lot of a lot of time on things that we and some of it you, you don't even have to change it Really? Well, that's what I'm looking at. I'm seeing things that are put out and approved and written by an attorney, approved by counsel, passed on, and servability and everything else. And then we're looking at it, and if we see something, I'll give you for instance. I, I went through this marine thing for Beller Beach. I see absolutely nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing. It says report something when you see it's wrong. That seems very reasonable. Yeah, the, the only thing in that area that I, I will tell you, and I told you last time, I think we need to have a little more teeth in it as opposed to you see things, well, 
you know, if a, a seawall is pushing in or something, we need to be able to tell that property owner, you need to get an engineer to look at your seawall. That, that's really what we need to do because there's no one in the city that can. I don't know what you mean by teeth. I really don't. Well, I'm going to ask Marvin to walk around and check every dock in the city. No, no, no you're he'll not. do it. I know he would. No, what I'm saying is just something in the code, that's, and that's why I gave you, I gave you Madeira Beach, I gave you that little pamphlet just to look at, and that's something we'll discuss further. All I'm suggesting is that we have a way. If if we get a complaint or we see something in our travels that looks potentially dangerous that we, we have something in the code that says, you know, resident, please, or however you want to put it, we'd like you to get engineers in a situation. Not being vague. Huh? Not being vague. Right. There's a lot of vague in there. That's right. And that's, that's what I'm saying. I didn't understand a thing you said. I said it's removing anything that's vague. There's a lot of vague in here that needs to be... I think that any code you read is vague. That's why we hire an attorney to interpret it for us. It's it's all over the place. Right. So so that's, you know, when we get to that portion, we'll, we'll get some more detail. I, I think the, the first sections that we're talking about, most of that is just housekeeping. Like, we need to... Get we're rid of uh, police department, okay? Is code correct? enforcement. Code enforcement. Okay. Uh, uh, <clears throat> and what Wanda did? We'll get to that. We'll so, get to that. I don't want to jump into that. Right. I want to keep some kind of order. Right. I'm going to go out of order right now and ask Marvin, what do you need? All right. What I have written for Lynn a couple of instances close to the neighborhood. The neighbor next to me, the seawall went down. I understand that. He All explained right, that so the last the meeting. Side of the bridge. I put together a basic list of things that a code enforcement officer could look at that would put a warning out there. One is a cracked cap. Two is no weep holes in the seawall relieve the hydraulic pressure behind it. The next is horizontal cracks in the slabs. Okay, these are the old ones. Next is at low tide when we do the inspection, if toward the water line at low tide you see a space between those slabs. That was all in here. That's in that form that Lynn century, but we have nothing in our codes to indicate how a code enforcement officer should go and look at that wall to indicate that these are the items that warrant an engineer to look at the wall and determine whether it needs repair or replacement. It's all listed in this. Did you read this? Yes. It's all listed in there about the weep holes and the hydro sensitivity. Right. That and that is something that I picked up. In the French, right. right. But we have nothing in the codes to indicate what a list of items are that an officer could look at to say, okay, we need a, a, an engineer to come out and inspect these seawalls. And what would that cost? That would say, okay. Then once they inspect it, after they find a cracked cap or a horizontal crack, does it need replacement? There is another step, but an engineer would have to look at it at that time to make sure, like at the end of all our fingers, or in an area where there's a lot of wave action, has the sea bed moved away from the bottom of the slab, which would then cause you to get that, the slab to move out with a lot of hydraulic pressure. Okay. But we can't do that type of inspection. That's just one part of it that's in that manual that Lynn put together. We'll pay across that bridge when we get to it then. That's all. <clears throat> Next is the unfinished business. And we can go into the 
uh, email that was sent out in effect by Rudy and I that we just changed the order in which we were going to procedurally conduct these uh, code reviews. Now, we can go around the table and start with, uh, I think we ought to start with Wanda because she's prepared a, a dossier that's very nice. Would you proceed in your observations, please? On the Yes. Okay. When I did this last time, I figured the best way to do a discussion is as I'm going through, make a note of the section that I had a point on, what question I had about it, if I had any suggestion for solving that question. A lot of these questions are just going to be discussions once we get here. And um, last time I had asked the committee members to do something similar. It doesn't have to be this format, but send them all to Patty beforehand so she can distribute so we can review them before the meeting. Because something I have a question on, you might have an answer for, and that might trigger something, or might trigger something else. So, and then the very, the very first one there was on the enforcement procedure. I, first thing I was reading that, I was thinking, well, why don't they just take a photo? Because FedEx comes by, they deliver me a package, they take a photo of that package on my porch. Uh, and I know uh, process servers take a photo of you when they hand you that subpoena. So that's, that seems like something that would be a good idea. And I just put it on there as a question as to whether that's something that would be possible. Yeah, and, and realistically, we do that when we post it just to have another document because you'll have people that, uh, and I'm gonna give you one that's coming up Friday. The individual his mailing address is a house that he rents here. He doesn't live there. He lives somewhere else. Well, all his his mailing address is that street. So we mailed it there, and it was returned to us. But we posted the property also. Uh, Would you please lower your mask? Oh, <laughs> we posted the property also, so, and we took a picture of it. So. We've done more than we needed to do by the code. So um, that's already done? It's, yeah, but, 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 but we need to add it to the, to say that. And, and there's also the section that says it can be hand delivered to anybody who is a resident of the property and it, who's over you know, right. a minor age. The, the, but you really need to get a picture of handing that, that to the person if you're not posting it. Just, because I, I know they bring subpoenas to the VA, and as a receptionist, they can hand it to me. Right. And they would get a picture of me accepting a subpoena. No, so I when I see them coming, I turn around and run away. Yeah. What, what you put there, I think we, just adding a photo in that section is probably a smart idea, we, even though we already do it for when we post it. Uh, you know, your comment about publishing the newspaper, <laughs> It's in the code that way, but we've never done that. That, you know, they've always mailed them and delivered them. I mean, actually. This is part of the code enforcement procedure. It's yeah. Really okay, then you're saying that this can be taken yeah. care of. All right. I, item D, then. Item D. Well, that, that that's part of the state statute, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So does that still have to stay in the code, or is it? It's it, just something you, it, it's like the checklist and you never get down that far in the checklist. Right, right. So that's basically a okay. no point. And then on um, the foreclosure section, said the city can authorize the city attorney to foreclose on the lead. Have we ever done that? No, not to my knowledge. I think we've had, I guess, we've never had a house with the lead that high. Uh, I think the highest lead we ever had that house over there on when it didn't it get up to like 40 Rudy? I can't remember across from Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's a good thing. And we settled with them at that time. They got okay. the house done. Um, just the threat that they can do it, I think, is good to have it in there. Yeah, no, it's that's a good thing. Schedule of civil 
you have the schedule civil penalties, the penalties, there's a list and it says it, it relates to specific chapters. Seems like anything in the code would be subject to civil penalties or is there something I'm missing there? Well, I think what it's listing is the sections of the code that there is a penalty allowed. Oh. Not, you know, uh, that every section has a penalty. And it's, it's just giving you that information. So, you know, I, I don't think that's a, a big issue. For okay. Next. Okay, the next one was the um, duty to provide written notice of the foreclosure. Um, if the property is vacant, the owner or registrant must designate and return a local individual um, or local property management company responsible for security and maintenance of the property. Has this been an issue in the past or do we have clients? For the most part, no. We, we have, you know, every once in a while. Uh, let's see, Mrs. Knoll was a problem, right? Okay, so, but that was a long time ago. We've got one right now that's under property management. We've had to run them down a few times because these, when they go into foreclosure or the bank takes them, it's like they go in a black hole somewhere. You gotta research and find out who's got it. And our code does require them to register that foreclosure with us. Uh, it's in the code? It's in the code. Okay. And if, they, and, if they, and if they don't comply, they're subject to penalty. We can take it to code enforcement. And if the registration not, must be received within 14 days of the first citation for improper maintenance, is 14 days? Uh, I think 14 is reasonable. Is it? Yeah, it's a couple of weeks. Depending on what it is they've got to do, like as an example, I'll use one that we have on Bill Boulevard. They had to do a fence repair and uh, put a new fence up. So you're not going to get a fence guy tomorrow to do it. It takes some time. And the registration fee uh, was just fixed at $100. Uh, does that cover the cost of administering the process? I, I, I think I think the yes. things like that should. The answer is yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, because we're not really doing anything. They're sending it to us. You know, they're they're and we're collecting it, and putting it in the file to make sure we're aware of it. Make That's it good. Updated. Um, on the next section is where I saw something. It says they must inspect and maintain the property on a regular basis. I think regular probably needs a little more definition to it. And what would what would be a reasonable amount of uh, saying we need to uh, inspect and maintain the property? Should that be monthly, bi-monthly, at least once a quarter? Weekly would be too much. Have you run into trouble with this situation? No. Well. That one on Gulf. Well, yeah. Can't hear you. But that, that one on Gulf, yeah. So if we did it, you know, set a time frame, like you're saying, I think that's a better situation as opposed to just say regular. What is regular? Um, I think we're better off saying specific. So that's a yes. So. Right. Okay. Okay, and then we get to section B there are maintenance requirements. Are the fines for failure was that covered in two thirty four? Two thirty four, I think was the list of uh, Yeah, the, the 
magistrate is the one that she could fine up to $250 a day. Uh, and for things that are So this is covered? Yeah, the, the, the magistrate, when they come to, to plead their case, she she has that authority. She can hire, buy, buy up to $250 a day for the first uh, violation and up to $500 a day for a repeat violation. And then for the uh, irreparable, which would be a, a good example, would be a short-term rental. Uh, we don't have as much of that as we used to. We, we had a rash of people just saying, I'll pay the $1,000. Well, the console, which isn't in your copy, but it's in the front, raised it to 5000 for multiple occurrences, which uh, hopefully if we get another one of them. Sounds good. Two or three, two or three times of that, it's, you know, they're going to have a lien on the house of fifteen or $20,000. That'll be that's worked yeah. out. I mean, we've got one right now with a lien of twelve thousand dollars because of multiple thousand dollar fines. Good luck with that. Well, they sell a house. You do what you can. I understand. It's not a homesteaded house, so. So you can lien it now. Yeah, we we lien it. Okay, on two thirty three, the sheriff's office. Uh, so we'll have the authority and duty to inspect properties. Are, are they doing that? Is there going to is there is there a problem with that? I, I also question the wording that says this shall be at their discretion as to what is adequate, and I kind of have a problem leaving it up because we we had the RV in the in the uh, driveway, and the chair spot came. And I said, "Oh, you have a permit for that?" Yeah, I saw that. And he was going to walk away. Run said, uh, "We have no written, nothing written." Yeah, just no problem. Okay. Well. Are they really doing a good job? I I have not been pleased with the sheriff's department's code enforcement. Well, I will tell you, my opinion is they haven't been doing a very good job, uh, and I think we're paying an inordinate amount of money per hour for what we get out of it. It's Forty-eight bucks an hour. And, this is uh, a legitimate question, but it's not our purview. To, right. It's a but, city but, council. Yeah. And realistically, uh, part of the problem is when you have the sheriff do it, that's a deputy. Okay. He's, he's a sheriff. He's not a code enforcement. He has no background in code enforcement. The only background he has is, you know, if you read something in the book. That, that's my been my concern, and uh, which is where leaving that. something vague like this at their discretion that doesn't get the job done. Right, right. So maybe there's something that you want to think about. That's questionable. Okay. Put more teeth in. Yes. Fifty-four one. Uh, Before you get out of uh, this thing. Uh, Patty, did you email those sections to them? The ones that were missed? No, they handed them out. Okay. They have a right. They have a okay. There, there's a section that you didn't get sent to you or didn't get put in the book originally, and it's uh, section 2 350, which is a, our purchasing policy. Yes. And there's only one paragraph, basically, and it's Two three fifty that I I kind of feel like and you know, I want some feedback that this this purchasing policy was written or code was written many many twenty plus years ago and what you could buy for three thousand dollars twenty years ago is a lot different than what you can buy today and you know I want to make a suggestion that we what suggestion what where are we at on here uh, on Two section three fifty. Two fifty. Three. Three. Yeah. A. Right. A. Here. Yeah. Okay. okay. It says three thousand yeah. dollars. I'd like to recommend that that goes to five thousand dollars. Okay. And then
and then in B, uh, the 3 will change to 5 to 10. That will still stay the same. But with the other caveat that the city council may authorize an expenditure between 10 and $25,000 upon receipt of at least three written bids, quotes, or proposals. Because doing a bid for something that's $20,000, it's very time consuming, and you can go to three vendors and get a price for it. Good example, we've got a bid out right now for to put uh, I think it's six video cameras around the building. Well, that that process is very cumbersome, very long, and really all you're doing is buying video cameras. And you know, it would seem to me that it would be much more efficient if you could just go get three quotes instead of doing the advertisement in the newspaper, the documents you have to do. To you know, big, big, big document. Uh, so, those are a couple things I'd like to see change. That the council still got to approve them, but it eliminates it. And we've done this. We've suspended bid requirements for something like uh, what did we do recently? Uh, oh, a repair on Donato Street. It was like seventeen thousand dollars. Well, by our document. We, had, we would have had to bid that. We went out and got three quotes, and then I submitted it to city council and asked them to suspend the bid requirements. Well, you know, I'm, I'm taking that step out of there is what I'm asking. To, to, you know, so, so you want me to go 10 to, go 10 to 25 instead of? Right. There, there's an extra sentence that will be in there, and I'll get you something right and clarify it. You, you prepare that? Will you prepare that? Yeah, I'll send you something. Okay, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> but the rest of the purchasing code is fine. It's just those initial sections. And, and uh, from an efficiency standpoint, it's much easier. You're still taking it to the city council. Would there, would there be any advantage, Lynn, to putting some wording in there saying that these thresholds can be modified by council. Um, by resolution. By something. resolution or yeah, as that's situation. That's probably a good idea. You know, probably, probably that would give you more, more ability to go to council and bypass this kind of a process. Right. Would you bring that back to us? That would yeah. be fine. Yeah. Okay. That, that's the only thing really in there. We want to go around the room and stay in section two before we come to the four. Sure. Let everybody else speak. Yeah. And just do any add ons if anyone has any. From for section two. For section two, two. Four. sure. We've completed it. I was just waiting for it. Now we'll go around from right to left with the, the board. Rudy? Comments? Yeah. First, one of the things I kind of thought, why do we do this? And section two is primarily code enforcement and special master, yet neither one of them was invited to this meeting, and I think their input would be critical. What have they encountered so far in enforcing these codes? Uh, where do they think there's shortcomings, and what are their recommendations? There are people that do this every day and, and face the public uh, and know the shortfalls. So I would recommend that somewhere in this process that Susan Moore, who's the special master, and I talked to her today, she wasn't available today, of course, on short notice. I left a message for Dan Daughtery or uh, Darkey, uh, code enforcement officer, for them to come in. But at some point, I think the committee should request they come in and comment. Maybe we want to do it at the end of what we're suggesting and have them review that and give us their thoughts, plus add anything to it. Um, but I just think those people need to be part of this process. Um, then, and, and just so you know, Laura is the code administrator. 
So she she does all the administration. This is the question. Is it in this committee or is it sitting in my at my left? She's she's the administrator for code enforcement. Uh, she takes care of all the any administrative. Yes, she. Do you want to ask her? <laughs> and, and she was she was the code enforcement officer until we did the sheriff part time. Certainly, by the end of this meeting, I think Boris has the opportunity to yeah. give us some input. Yeah. Where she feels we need some upgrading. A lot of what I also see are too many um, maids and not enough shouts. First one um, I came to was when we talked about rental managers in section 245B. It says. Uh, Tenant can be identified, may be cited for the violation. Um, in addition, for rental properties, rental managers may be provided a courtesy copy. Should be, shall be provided a copy. And uh, or you said something about rental managers have to uh, provide you with copies of foreclosures. Should we not have them, if they're renting property in this city, shouldn't they be registered? Every property that's, that they rent, they need to register that they're the agent for that so that we know who to go to because they have to know the people that own the property or are legally responsible for the property. So they need to be more accountable for the properties they rent. They just can't come in, pick up the fees, and go home. They need to be accountable for some of this. Well, you kind of talked about the rental registration. The rental registration, we ask them to do that, but it's very hard to monitor which properties are being foreclosed unless we're notified. And the properties that notify us, they do register. Currently, we don't have that many that are in foreclosure, but then they renew their foreclosure and they send us the documentation. And a lot of the wording in Section 2 is taken deliberately out of the state statute. So where it says shall and may, that's from the state statute. Because may can be this way, shall means you will do it. Right. And that's why they specifically word it that way. And consequently, they do word it very vaguely, and that's how the state statute is also worded. Yeah, but I, it's my understanding that we can written here somewhere that we can go over and above what the state requests. I'm not right. sure of that. Well, I'm not sure of that either. I'm no, just, I just know that our word is from the I state don't, statute. I don't. No, if, if, for instance, they say a fine is such and such, in their case, we can say it may be more than that. Can't we? Isn't it? You, um, can, you can, yeah, the fines... There's a like is an example, and I'll use the short-term rental fine. The maximum city our size can go is five thousand dollars. That's the max. If you're a city larger, I think it can go to twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand. Like I think Miami charges twenty thousand every every time they give somebody twenty thousand dollars. So, uh, and those those fines and things are. Part of them are set by uh, the state because they're level fines, like I think it's called, uh, is it Polar? I'm trying to remember what they're called. Where we talked about the uh, uh, Are we getting into an area of interpreting the law? And I, I think we've overstepped what we're talking about. All right. If it's in the law, it's in the law. We're getting away from what I'm actually asking. Actually. Rental properties are far and above more problematic in the city than resident-owned and lived-in properties. Right. So one of the key elements are rental managers. A lot of these properties are owned by people who don't live in them or live here. Right. So they're turned over to rental managers, rental agents. My thought is we need to make those people more accountable to us, more visible to us. If you're renting a property, if you're a room manager of a property in Bel Air Beach, 
you have to tell the city that you're the manager that you're the property. manager of that property and here's all my contact information and this is these are the tenants and this is the you know the particulars of the rental agreement or lease you have to tell the city it's not you know may or shall it is shall yeah tell the city well Laura, has this been a large problem are we talking about foreclosed properties no. or rental properties? Rental properties. Rental properties. Just communicating with rental managers of rental properties. We get very little communication with rental property and managers. you need more? Excuse me? And you should have more, you need more, you feel it's short. It would be very hard to monitor. It would take an extraordinary amount of our time to make them accountable. Well, maybe it needs a penalty. Excuse me? Maybe then it needs a penalty. If you don't register a property as the rental manager, your property can be fined X number of dollars. And maybe then they'll well, the Well, they, they can be. And, and I'll give you an example that's happening in a code hearing this Friday. They didn't pay their rental registration fee. We sent them two notices. They still didn't pay it. So now we're going to take them to code enforcement. So now what will happen the base administrative fee for a code enforcement hearing is $500. So it's going to cost them $500 there, uh, depending on what the magistrate does. She's going to assess the registration fee and the $100 late penalty to them, probably. So, in essence, it's cost them $900 that they could have got done for $300. So, and she could charge them an additional fine if she wanted to for not complying. So there is a penalty for it for not registering their property. But there's nothing that says a rental manager has to come to the city and say, I'm renting property in this city. No. no. I'm responsible for this property. No. It just seems incumbent that we should have that coming from them. No. I think you'd find that more in the condos than you would in these single homes. because. Uh, a good majority of these are just rented by, you know, the homeowner. Uh, Again, the is it a is it a big home. problem, Laura? <clears throat> it's hard to say. It's hard to say. When we give them, when we provide them their rental registration form, there's an area on there that we ask them to identify if they have a property manager. Have you had problems with that? I would say 95% of them come back with no property manager indicated. Okay. So we have no way of knowing whether they just fail to provide that information or they really are managing it themselves. And if you happen to stumble across it, you go the route that Lynn was talking about. Usually when we find out if there's a rental property manager involved is when we're having code violations at that property. And okay. through doing investigation, then we will identify that there actually is a property manager involved. But 95% of the property owners who fill out that rental registration form do not put that information on there. Because it also changes. A lot of the rental properties only have a management company one year, and then the next year they change it. So they never update that information with us. Even though they pay the fee every year. But they'll still pay their fee but they're not telling us if there's a rental company. Either they don't have one, or they're just admitting the information. And it would take a considerable amount of time to do all investigations for all those properties. I, I agree that there needs to be some, some teeth there saying, if, if you indicate no property manager, and we find out later that there is, that's a problem. Would um, this help you, Laura, Lynn? No. No? No. Well, when we need to find out if, a rental pro if there's a rental manager there, well, sure, we, we understand find a that. way to do it. But to have to do it for the 400 rentals that we have, that was my because question. if you do for one, you can't not do for all of them. So I would have to go through every form and then investigate each and every one. It would take an extraordinary amount of time to do that. Uh, I guess my point was, if you find out through code violations later that, They've added a property manager or chain property managers, and didn't, and you weren't notified that there should be 
And not, not that you go investigate it, but you find out through other processes. They answered that. They said they'd turn it over to the code enforcement. Well, we're, we're asking the homeowner, the property owner, to provide that information. And I'm so if, if they, you want they to don't find the property owner, owner, or are you finding the rental management company? Well, you're, you're technically, you can only find the property owner. You can't find the, you know, the, the management company, there's really nothing you can do to them uh, because the code is for, shoot, is for, the <coughs> property. So if you're by, if your property's violating the code, we don't go after the guy that's renting in the house, even though we could, because the code does give us that allowance. If we wanted to go after both, we could. But we don't. We traditionally go after whoever the property owner is. Okay. Are you satisfied, Randy? Well, if you read to. Dash 245 all the way down to K. It says managers of rental properties may file with the code enforcement manager of rental properties. I think it should be shall. I'll leave it at that. Okay. Unless the group wants to go with it, fine. Um, the only other thing I found prior to that, backing up to E8. Notice that failure of the violator to attend the hearing may result in the fine being assessed against him. Should be him or her. Just and that is in uh, 245E8. You want that as well? Yeah, we, we want that one. The shall, that's fine. K, yeah. K, K is manager of the rental property instead of may, shall, file with code enforcement. Manager of a list of properties they manage. Just have it in there. Why not? And then your next edit was 240, 245 E 8. At the end of it, it just says against him, it should be him or her. The question of may in it. The may result in a failure to. Where are you? On, on oh, oh, okay. You mean B? So on, on A, you have a may in there. Oh. Notice, yeah. notice yeah, that I, the failure of the violator to attend the hearing may result in a fine being assessed. Who is it? Is that shot? at the discretion of who? The magistrate. Well, that's discretion of the magistrate. Yeah, yeah. But him or her, that's... Are they having actual hearings, or are they all done? Can't hear you, Angel. No, we're having. Sorry. We haven't had any for a while. We're we're having one this Friday, actually three of them, two for rental and one because a house isn't completed within the time frame of the code, uh, and he was given an extension and it's not moving. Uh, I'm sure you know where that house is. It's on 25th. And this is that big block or concrete monster. So he's he's left he's over his two year window. So uh, we're taking him to court enforcement. Do they do that here? Yes. Okay. Because I know we got summoned to court jury duty and they said forget it, everything's virtual. You know. Yeah. So I just was curious about. Yeah, we're doing it here. I mean. Magistrate can't come because we're all distance. So. You're satisfied? Yeah. Fine. Anything else, Rudy? Uh, no, we weren't here. No, the, um,
well taken. You note this, uh, Wanda? I'm sorry? Will you note that? I haven't found it yet. He's keeping it a secret. Where was that in? Where was that? The police? Uh, it's 247. Got it. 247? Got it. I don't see anything about police. Yeah, it does. It's a police. Right at the top of the page. 247. Yeah, I see that. City police. Department. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Rudy? Still on that section. Thank you. Fine job. You and Wanda both. Angela? Sorry, I just had a question. Um, Can't hear you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm glad to do that. Oh, I don't blame you. Um, in section two. Um, on B. So Say it again. 248. Okay. B. B. Um, the fine of $500 being opposed, imposed on each case, is that still yeah. applicable? The 500 or the Yeah, limit? usually it costs us about 300 from the magistrate. So I was wondering if cost had gone up. That's 40% profit. That isn't bad. Well, it's not profit because you're mailing, you're certified <laughs> mail. You're, I'm so. just trying to speed things up yeah. a little, Lynn. No. That's all. And that was just recently adjusted. Okay. And so the other fine amounts in here have been adjusted as well, like the $250 per day. Right. The, the only thing that's been adjusted recently is the very last line where it says a thousand. That's been raised to five thousand. Okay. Yes, they are. Yeah. Reduce that? No. No. In increase it. We increase it to the maximum we could for the size of our city. You We've already that. done that. We've already done that. Okay. It's just not the codified final. It's kind of code, but yeah. it's not in the code. Right. It's taken care of then. Yes. Okay. Angela? Um, I, I just had a question on 261. Nothing exists. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's not, that's not an issue. Thank you. We follow up on those. Um, and then on section 311, E. I just, uh, I had a question because it seems like this is being filed, like paper files. Do we have backup computer files? Yeah, the ordinances are actually online. Okay. Yeah. The city clerk has to maintain 
the originals for all ordinances and resolutions. It talks about binders, and I just had this vision of <laughs> these massive filing cabinets. Well, but that's part of records management. There's certain things you got to keep forever. We have minutes back to 1950, right? Yeah. So. Well, if we were updating this and you weren't doing that anymore, I would just no. say, you know, maybe we want to. Well, every council member gets a hard, gets a binder of uh, ordinances, and you bring them by every couple of months to get them updated. Yeah, we have a pile of them here. It's, it's not as much as it used to be. So that's handy. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Brenda? No changes, no comments. No comments. I have nothing further except to say a fine job to those who contributed to this situation, including the city personnel. Now we'll proceed to number 10. 54. I didn't cross 10 off. <laughs> And again, I'll start with my, Wanda. My first point here was on the um, business or commercial businesses enterprise they restricted. Have we had more businesses pop up since the pandemic, since more people are working from home? Has that been uh, not possible? that Not that we noticed. Uh, the technicality of is there a business in your home is, are you paying employees there? So that's very hard to say that someone's doing business in their home. They may be operating a private business, you know, but they don't have employees there and they aren't coming there every day. So we haven't, uh, we don't really. So you have no problem with the situation? We have no control over that, really, unless we caught okay. someone. Thank you. Okay. So, if the um, occupational taxes are imposed on any home-based businesses that are identified. Right. And then we got down to the, the fees. These fees, these all go into the general fund, right? I'm sorry, you said yes? Right. So, even if they don't have employees? The, the, we don't have any businesses in the city of Bel Air Beach. That's what I thought. Right. Except the hotel, right? Well, that's debatable, and we're trying to get that rectified when we do our next uh, comp plan. We're gonna Let's not go there. Yeah, we're going to try to resolve that issue. Uh, okay. But at this point in time, we don't have any businesses. Okay. Which is primarily defined by definition of business. Part and primarily defined by definition of business. You can have a whole office. Right. And you can have a whole computer doing your number. Right. But if you're the things like have a clients come to your house or things like right. that, then it's no, a different situation. No employees coming in and out, right. no uh, customers coming in and out, no it would massive be very suspect product people. coming in and out. Coming in and out. Right. Yeah. Okay. We had <laughs> those for a while. We've had a couple of those for a while. Especially that big one on the corner. <laughs> but he has since moved his operations. <laughs> Please continue, Wanda. Yeah, on, on, the, on the fees, um, have there been any, any problems with collecting these fees? Any complaints or issues? No, th this is one that I think when they adjusted the rental registration, this was missed and just my personal opinion, I guess, to some degree, is the base for a rental registration is three hundred dollars. Well, that first one, I think, should be three hundred, and then the ten should probably go to something like twenty and ten. Just again, these fees have not changed. In let's see, I'll tell you, probably twenty years. So you have no problem with this situation? 
No, I, I think they need to be adjusted. Okay. Have we done any investigation of other communities of what's usual and normal? What's no, we haven't, but we, we, we can do that, and I can get you some information on that. Mm -hmm. the, the problem is, and we only really, we have three, right? Four. 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 Uh, the timeshare, that falls under this. Mm -hmm. uh, the motel, Nautical Watch, the motel falls under this. And the other resort, a portion of it has fell under this. Because the guy claims he's a timeshare. But that's another thing we're going to do a little more investigation into. It's his, beyond our pay scale. Right. He's, yes. He's, he's got... He owns 21 of the 42 units there, and the other 21 people have to pay the $300 registration fee. But you know, he, he claims he falls under this thing because it's a timeshare. Well, we found out that he's not really a timeshare. So, you know, it's it's a skirting issue, and uh, I don't think we need to go there. I don't. I don't think that. It, 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 if he classified himself properly, he would be subject to this. Right. So we're basically looking at these numbers, and for 10, up to 10 rooms is $300. 11 to 20, make it 20. Right. And over 20, 10 for additional. Okay. Thanks for me. Okay. Well, what? I'm sorry? 100 with what? 300, then 20, then 10. And then a 54.62, did you say that that um, registration fee is now 300? Yes. Okay, so it just hasn't been updated here. Right. It's, it's now 300, and the $100 late fee is still there. Okay, now my concern on, on this next one on Part B with the Council to make future amendments to the annual rental registration fee by resolution. Um, this doesn't and is not impacted by the state restriction on short-term rental stuff, right? Okay. Because I talked to Leslie and she thought that was why we hadn't changed it before. Because we had gone up to 300 and had come back down to 100. Yeah, that has The short-term rental section, I've told the council probably 20 yeah, times. I, I, yeah, I, th leave I, think, alone. I think we were concerned. I think the concern here was that this would cross that line and get us in trouble with the legislature. Right. Probably why we backed it off. Right. So that's not good. One, one, one thing that we, that I know Laura's talked to me about, and I don't really carry it away, it, making it a calendar year fee as opposed to a fiscal year fee. Because I think, as Laura said, it confuses people. She's the one that deals with it the most. So I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Calendars are a lot easier to think about. <laughs> yeah, because because what people tell her is we send out the rental registrations and uh, we send them out in September and they um, are due by October first. It becomes late if it's October thirty first. People are very confused because some of them will pay. And he said, oh, I paid for that year. Well, it's because we're on the fiscal year, and their mindset is the calendar year. So it does present a little bit of confusion for the people who are trying to comply and register and pay, because in their mind, I paid during that year. I've already paid the year. But October 1st begins 2021. So, so you're handling the situation on a case-by-case -case basis? No, they have to pay back. To no, I mean person. it's you're you're taken care of. I just I think when the it inquiry might comes be in. easier for the registrants if it was on a calendar year basis. Like our beach passes are on a calendar year basis. You're, when you get a beach pass, it's good to, for the calendar year. Is that your recommendation to this committee? I think the rental registration would be easier for for people to comply with if it was on a calendar year basis rather than a fiscal year basis. That's a good I believe they probably did it on a fiscal yeah. year That's basis. That's input from your, your committee. So no. You probably did it on a fiscal Second. year basis because of the budget. I'd like to ask for a motion from the 
zoning department? Did it go to a calendar year? So moved. Second? Second. Is, is that in the code here anywhere? Yeah, it, it is. Yes. It's in 5462A. <laughs> So what do you want that October 31st date to actually read? January to December. It would be, uh, let's see, January 1st and January 31st. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Say it again without your... Oh, January 1st and uh, January 31st. But it wouldn't take effect until next year. Right. right. Would you do so? Note that, Wanda, please. I have. Thank you. With recommendation from the zone. We on the last one. Mm. One five three. study how the wording would change due to that. But this seemed to have gone into a little bit of the detail about the uh, exemptions. I was just wondering if that needed to be updated. Yeah, we probably need to remember exactly what the new exemptions were. I, mean, I think widows of uh, disabled veterans yeah. would, would inherit their additional exemption. Uh, there was one other that I don't remember. Well, that was one of my questions also. And I copied, I mean, I made a copy of the application. So there are several. Other. And I didn't know why Bella Beach just had one listed. Did yeah. what? Why we only had one listed. You know, the income. Yeah, they, the income may need to, that, that could be different now. Yeah. Let's see. That's 15 years ago. We'll have to look at that. Do you probably just want to have uh, Fred take a look at this yeah. and update it according to the uh, right. new exemptions? Okay, that's my list. Thank you, Wanda. Comments from Rudy? Uh, I didn't have anything to do with that. Nothing? So I Angela? I just have the homestead, which I gave him. The homestead exemption, that was my question. Okay. Brenda? Nothing. All right, Lynn, do you want to say something about the homestead exemption? No, we'll, we'll look get those. Okay. Is there any, I think that this group has done one hell of a job. Can't say that out loud on the camera. It's done a great job in the, the, the attempt to look at the code, at least the first two sections that we have. Now, the next one is scheduled for number 10, which will be a by itself for the next meeting. Please? On the 27th at 1 o'clock. Yeah, right. 27th at 1. Now, is there any unfinished business to come before this group? Do, does the group want to hear from uh, Special Master and the current code enforcement officer in the city? Well, I think it's pretty well covered with Laura sitting there, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, she's not Special Master. 
Are there any issues there? She's why, don't, why don't you just assign me to discuss with what? them? And if they, why don't you just assign me to discuss that with them, the, the special master and the code enforcement, to ask them if they have any, and then I'll report back? That's an excellent idea. Seeing you initiated the contact. Yeah. Well, I paid the price. Yes. He so, paid the price. I volunteered, right? Yes. Okay. Any other unfinished business with the group? I would just ask one of you share this with us, your template. It's just a Word document, three a table, three columns. Okay. So this didn't come from this thing. You just did this. Okay. Yep. Donna, you, you, is that it? Wanda, you still spearhead? This was excellent. Thank you very much. And I, I think Section 10 will probably generate a lot more, so I'm going to go through it first and send it to Patty. She can distribute it and we can at least review what the other people, what questions other people have before we come in. Yeah, if you have any comments on those sections, just send them. Just what? If you have comments ahead of time, then we can get that. Send them to Patty and we'll get them out to everybody so you've got them before you can come to look at it. Are we going to be missing any pages on Chapter 10? No. Okay. No. Chapter 10 and the others are fine. I think 10 and 94 will be the first. So, and a lot of that we've already updated, so it's just kind of going through and, you know, there's things that maybe we missed last time. It's, it's, you know. I do have a section for citizens' comments, and I see one citizen here. JC, the only thing that, uh, that has come up is security system. Okay, a lot of people are putting cameras around their homes, you know, outside surveillance cameras or oh, yes. around their homes. So how do you keep that camera from looking in the neighbor's windows? You well, you put a counter camera on the other side and look at his window. Right, exactly. <laughs> but should there be anything? Is that an issue? Could it be an issue? <laughs> privacy? That is called the epitome of Pandora's box. Absolutely. Sure, there be This brings the word to me, enforceability. Yes. You can't enforce it, but does it pay the, to mention that if cameras, if the cameras installed and they have that outside security type system that it must not go beyond the borders of the lot lines? I don't think this committee is in that situation. I don't know what the laws are. Well, I, I, I know that when we were looking at these before, we were looked at looking at lining, we were talking about light pollution isn't supposed to go over the property line. If you have outside lights, they're supposed to be shielded in such a way that it doesn't. So we could, I could see where something like that could be applied to uh, security cameras as well. Right. Well, then light pollution, there's a lot of that going on in the city. Yeah. But, but I'm just saying that because we have an ordinance that deals with light pollution, I think that could be, that could translate to requiring something to say, you know, security, home security cameras should be limited to the scope of your property. I think it should at least be mentioned. Well, Did you I mention think. this at council, councilman? Pardon me? Did you bring this up at council? No, it's something new that has come to my attention, so I'm here, you know, you're the committee that's going over the codes. I thought I would bring it up, and when you get to that area, discuss it. It is, it is our position as a committee to review the code, not invent the code. So I refer it to you as city council on behest of this committee to pursue your situation. I will bring it up. Thank you. Any comments from the city representatives? Or and I have to compliment these two people that put up with a lot of grief, et cetera, including the lady behind me, Patty, who keeps us fully informed. 
At this time, I'd like to call for an adjournment. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. So ordered.